Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wassalam wa rasulullah. You're watching Islam Always. This is your host, Yusuf Estes. This is called Muhammad A to Z plus 2. A full and complete background historical record of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. This is a production of IslamAlways.com. You can visit our internet website at IslamAlways.com for more videos and audios, articles like this. We want to begin by mentioning that while other people are clamoring over what to do when somebody draws a cartoon or picture of one of the prophets of Almighty God, peace be upon all of them, we decided it was high time for somebody to break it down and put it out here where you can really see everything about the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, everything from A to Z. In so doing, though, we discovered there was a whole lot more than A to Z, so we called it A to Z plus 2. But in any case, while you're watching and enjoying this program, remember you can download it, make copies of it, and distribute it freely so that you will all have the opportunity to share in this important contribution to the true historical character and the mission of Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib, the last and final messenger of Almighty God to all the humankind in Jinn. Muhammad A to Z plus two. We'll begin by mentioning that uh, all of this is going to be based on books, manuscripts, texts, and actual eyewitness accounts far too numerous to mention herein. All of it's preserved in the original Arabic language in a form that's preserved throughout the centuries by both Muslims and non-Muslims. Now before we begin the A to Z plus 2, I think it's necessary to notice the importance of the subject, which is Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. So many people today are discussing him, peace be upon him, but we want to know what was he really like? What did he teach? Why was he so loved by so many and yet hated by others? And did he live up to his claims? Was he really a holy man? Was he a prophet of God? And what is the truth about this man? Can we be totally honest in our judgment? Well, you be the judge. Now before I actually get into the A to Z plus 2, the facts, I'd like for us to just do some simple historical evidence and these are facts that are going to be narrated by people, Muslim and non-Muslim, who knew him personally. First of all, his name was Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib. And Muhammad means the praised one. Abdullah means the servant of Almighty God. And then, of course, it's talking about ibn. That means his father is. So his name is Muhammad, the son of the servant of Allah, which is his father. And he's from the noble tribe of the Quraysh, who were the leaders of Mecca in those days. He never fell into the common practice of his tribesmen of worshipping statues, idols, or man-made gods. He believed in the name of God as the highest of reverence and never took God's name in vain, nor did he make vainglorious statements about his purpose. He despised false worship in every form and all of the complexities and degradation to which it leads. He insisted on keeping the commandments of Almighty God just as the prophets of old had done. He never committed adultery and he forbid others from doing the same. He forbid usury and interest on lending money just the same as Jesus, peace be upon him, had done centuries before him. He never gambled nor did he allow it. He never drank any alcohol or strong drink, even though it was very normal. And in fact, many people in his day and time were alcoholics. He did not engage in any gossip, and he used to turn away from hearing anything related to it. He offered his prayers or worship in a manner and direction toward Jerusalem, until Allah ordered the change of it toward Mecca as was prescribed by prophets of old in the Bible. He was standing, bowing, kneeling, and prostrating with his face on the ground, just as prophets before him had done. This is mentioned, by the way, in the book of Genesis. He used to fast for days at a time to be closer to Almighty God and be away from the narrowness of worldly attractions. He did teach that Jesus, peace be upon him, was the immaculate conception and the miracle birth through Miriam or Mary, and that she was the best creation of Almighty God. 
He insisted even to the Jews of Mecca that Jesus, peace be upon him, was the Messiah, the Christ, the one that had been predicted to come in their Torah, the Old Testament. And he said that Jesus, peace be upon him, did many miracles by the permission of Almighty God, curing the lepers, restoring sight to the blind, and even bringing a dead man back to life. He stated clearly that Jesus, peace be upon him, was not dead, and rather that Almighty God had caused him to ascend and be raised up. He predicted that Jesus, peace be upon him, is going to return in the last days to lead true believers in a victory over the evil and unrighteous people, and that he will destroy. He's talking about Jesus will destroy the Antichrist. He commanded the payment of charity to the poor, and he was the defender and protector of widows, orphans, and wayfarers. He ordered people to unite with their families and honor the ties of kinship. And he restored relationships between family members. He required his followers to engage only in lawful marriage, relationships with women. He forbid sex outside of Almighty God's ordinance. He insisted on giving women their proper rights their dowries, their inheritance, their property, and fair treatment, and never did he permit them to abuse their wives. His patience and humble attitude was exemplary of all who knew him, and they had to admit to these virtues. Now what we're going to do is take a break, and then we're going to come right back and pick up with Muhammad A to Z plus two. You're watching Islam Always. And we're always open 24 hours a day. And always plenty of free parking. Slamalways.com And now, Muhammad, A to Z, plus two. <laughs> We've been talking about the background of Muhammad his character and so on but now what we want to do is talk about exactly those things which make him unique and distinct from the average human being and yet of course we realize that he is a man just like you or I in that respect he was born and he died peace be upon him at the same time though during his life he did achieve some very monumental things but there are a lot of things that others may consider insignificant and we want to begin by mentioning that these things all have a role that they play in the development of his character and his mission so let us begin with the letter A A he never lied he never broke a trust and he never bore false witness he was famous with all the tribes in Mecca at his time because he was known as a Sadiq which means the spirit of truth, the very spirit of truth itself. He was a Sadiq, the truthful. B. He never once engaged in sex outside of marriage, nor did he approve it, even though it was very common to do during his time. C. His only relationship with women were all legitimate contractual marriages with proper witnesses according to law, Islamic law. D. His relationship to Aisha was only that of marriage. He did not marry her the first time that her father offered her hand in marriage when she was very young. And he did not marry her until she reached the age of puberty and could decide for herself and was old enough to be married. Their relationship is described in every detail by Aisha herself in the most loving and respectful manner as a match truly made in heaven. Aisha is considered as one of the highest scholars of Islam and she lived out her entire life only having been married to Muhammad peace be upon him. She never desired any man after his death nor did she ever utter a single negative statement against her husband Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him. E. Muhammad forbade any killing until the orders for retaliation came from Allah. Even then, the limits were clearly spelled out within the Quran and his teachings, and only those engaged in active combat against Muslims or Islam were to be fought against in combat. 
and even then only according to very strict rules set forth by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala God Almighty F killing any innocent life is forbidden whether it is innocent children innocent men or women or elders or clergy or animals or even plant life all forms of life are protected in Islam G there was no genocide of Jews Muhammad peace be upon him offered mutual protection and forgiveness to the Jews even after they had broken their covenants with him on many occasions they were not attacked until it was clearly proven that they had been traitors during the time of war and tried to bring down the Prophet peace be upon him and the Muslims at any cost retaliation was only to those particular Jews who engaged in this and who had turned traitor but not any others H the slaves were common in those days for all nations and all tribes throughout Arabia and even in Europe it was Islam that encouraged the freeing of slaves and the great reward from Allah to those who did so Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him gave the example of this by freeing slaves and encouraging all of his followers to do the same. Examples include his own servant who was actually considered more like a son to him, Zayd ibn al-Haritha, and Bilal, the slave who was bought by Abu Bakr only for the purpose of freeing him. Next letter is I. While there were many attempts of assassination made on Muhammad peace be upon him, the most famous, by the way, was the night that Ali took his place in bed while he and Abu Bakr escaped to Medina. He did not allow his companions to slaughter any of those who had been involved in these attempts of assassination. Proof for this is when they entered Mecca triumphantly and his first words were to command his followers not to harm such and such tribe and so and so families there was one of the most famous of his acts of forgiveness and humbleness on the occasion of their entering into Mecca and their triumphant time at the very end of his mission J military combat was forbidden for the very first 13 years of prophethood that means that these desert Arabs who were instinctively skilled in combat and fighting and killing Yet, look, when they entered into Islam, they were forbidden to do this from the very beginning. They were told that they could not retaliate, nor could they fight, nor could they do combat. They were experts in this area. They had feuds amongst their tribes that lasted for decades. But it was not until the proper method of warfare was instituted by Allah in the Quran with proper rights, limitations, according to God's commandments, that any retaliation or combat was sanctioned or permitted. Orders from Allah made it clear who was to be attacked, how they were to be attacked, and when and what extent fighting could take place. K. Destruction of infrastructures was also absolutely forbidden except when it is ordained by Allah in certain instances and then only according to his commands. L. Cursing and invoking evil actually came to the Prophet. Peace be upon him from his enemies. While he would be praying for them to be guided to the very best. A classic example of this is the journey to Ataif. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, took a companion and met the uh, with the desire to meet with the leaders there but they would not even hear him out nor would they offer so much as any kind of courtesy which was called for by their custom and instead they set the children in the street against him and his companion throwing rocks and stones at him until his body was bleeding so much blood was filling his sandals he was offered revenge when Allah sent the angel Gabriel to him that if he would just give the command Allah would cause the surrounding mountains to fall down upon the people of Ataif and destroy them all bringing down these huge rocks on them to pay them back for the rocks they threw on him <laughs> instead of cursing them instead of asking for their destruction 
He, peace be upon him, prayed for them and asked Allah, O oh Allah, guide them. Guide them to worship you alone without partners. M, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, claimed every person who was born, regardless of the religion or belief of their parents, every child was already born in a state of Aslam which means the submission to God on his terms in peace. They were born as Islamics or in Arabic Mu-Islams, Muslims. And Mu-Islam means the one who does Islam and Islam means the one who submits to Allah in peace and obeys his orders and his commandments. He further stated that God has created every person in the image of that is according to his plan and that their spirit is his then as they grow older they begin to distort the faith according to the influence of the prevailing society and their own prejudices but every single child is born in a state of Islam and as such if any child dies they will go to paradise what a beautiful teaching regardless of the religion of the parents all children are in the right way with Almighty God. And Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught his followers to believe in the God of Adam, Noah, Abraham, Jacob, Moses, David, Suleiman, Solomon, and Jesus, peace be upon them all. And to believe in them as true prophets, true messengers, and true servants of Almighty Allah. Muhammad insisted on ranking all the prophets up at the highest level without any distinction between them. And he ordered his followers to say the words, Alayhi salam, peace be upon him, when mentioning any of the names of these great prophets. You're listening to Muhammad A to Z. We're going through the stages of showing the many characteristics of Muhammad. We found that, by the way, there were more than just A to Z, so we're calling it Muhammad A to Z plus two. Let us now continue. We're on the letter O. Muhammad also taught that the Torah, or the Old Testament, or Zabur, the Psalms, and the Injil, the Gospel, or New Testament, were all originally from the very same source as the Quran. From Allah, to the angel Gabriel and he asked the Jews to judge according to their own book Muhammad asked the Jews judge according to your book and they tried to cover up some of it to hide the correct judgment knowing that he peace be upon him couldn't read they realized that Muhammad was not able to discern one letter from another so they thought by covering part of the book up that they could get away with what they were saying yet he called them to really observe their book. Let us look now to P. He prophesied, <laughs> predicted and foretold of events to come. And these events took place, just as he said. He even predicted something from the past that could come true in the future, and it has. You see, the Quran states that Pharaoh was drowned in the Red Sea while chasing after Moses. And Allah said that he's going to preserve Pharaoh as a sign for the future. And it was Dr. Maurice Bukai who said in his book, The Bible, The Quran, and Science, that he said it's clear that this very thing has happened and the very person of Pharaoh had been discovered in Egypt and he is now on display for all to see. And this event took place thousands of years before Muhammad, peace be upon him, and it came true centuries after his death. Q, go to the next letter there has been more written about Muhammad peace be upon him than any other person on earth he has been praised very high even by famous non-Muslims for centuries one of the first examples we quote from is from the Encyclopedia Britannica as it confirms regarding Muhammad a mass of detail in early sources shows that he was an honest and upright man who had gained the respect and loyalty of others who were likewise honest and upright men. That's in volume 12 in Psychopathy of Britannica. The next letter, R. Another impressive uh, tribute to Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the very well-written work of Michael H. Hart. It's called The 100. 
a ranking of the most influential people throughout history. He states that the most influential person in all history was Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Jesus as the second. Examine these actual words. This is what it says from the book, The 100, a ranking of the most influential persons in history. He said, My choice of Muhammad to lead the list of the world's most influential persons may surprise some readers and may be questioned by others, but he was the only man in history who was supremely successful on both the religious and secular level. And that's from the book published by Hart Publishing Company, 1978. It's on page 33. By the way, we're up to letter S, and while we are reviewing statements from famous non-Muslims about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, let us consider this. This is by Laratine in the History de la Toureki, which is Paris, 1854, volume 2, pages 276 to 277. He says, Philosopher, orator, apostle, legislator, warrior, conqueror of ideas, restorer of rational dogmas, of a cult without images, the founder of twenty terrestrial empires and of one spiritual empire. That is Muhammad. As regards all standards by which human greatness may be measured, we may well ask, is there any man greater than he? Letter T. And then we read what George Bernard Shaw, a famous writer and non-Muslim, says. This is in The Genuine Islam, Singapore, Volume 1, Number 8, and it's uh, 1936. He says... He, wa he must be called the savior of humanity. I believe that if a man like him were to assume the dictatorship of the modern world, he would succeed in solving its problems in a way that would bring it much needed peace and happiness. What a beautiful testimony and certainly something well appreciated these days. Letter U. Then we find that K.S. Rakamakrishna Rao in his... Uh, he was a Hindu professor of philosophy a booklet that he has it's called Muhammad the prophet of Islam and he calls him the perfect model for human life he explains his point by saying the personality of Muhammad is most difficult to get into the whole truth of it only a glimpse of it can I catch what a dramatic succession of picturesque scenes there is Muhammad the prophet there is Muhammad the warrior Muhammad the businessman, Muhammad the statesman, Muhammad the orator, Muhammad the reformer, Muhammad the refuge of the orphans, Muhammad the protector of the slaves, Muhammad the an emancipator of women, Muhammad the judge, Muhammad the saint, all, all in all these magnificent roles in all these departments of human activities. He is alike to a hero. If we stop there, that'd be enough, but we've got more. The letter V. What should we think about our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when someone with the worldly status, such as Mahatma Gandhi, speaking on the character of Muhammad, peace be upon him, says in his uh, work, it's called Young India, he said, I wanted to know the best of one who holds today undisputed sway over the hearts of millions of mankind. I became more than convinced that it was not the sword that won a place of Islam in those days in the scheme of life. It was the rigid simplicity, the utter self-effacement of the Prophet, peace be upon him, the scrupulous regard for his pledges, his intense devotion to his friends and followers, his intrepidity, his fearlessness, his absolute trust in God and in his mission. These, and not the sword, carried everything before them and surmounted every obstacle. When I closed the second volume, he's talking about the prophet's biography, I was sorry that there was not more for me to read of this man's great life. Again, if we stopped, that would be sufficient. But let us read on. Letter W. It was the English author Thomas Carlyle in his Heroes and Hero Worship simply amazed as to, and there's the quote, how can one man single-handedly wield the warring tribes and wandering Bedouins 
into a most powerful and civilized nation in less than two decades. Again, if we stop, that's sufficient. But we'll go on. Letter X. And Diwan Shand Sharma writes in Prophets of the East, he says, Muhammad was the soul of kindness and his influence was felt and never forgotten by those who around him. That's in Prophets of the East, published in Calcutta in 1935 on page 12. If we have nothing more than this to mention about the Prophet Muhammad, it should be sufficient. Yet we'll continue. You see, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was nothing more or less than a human being. But he was a man with a noble mission, which was to unite humanity on the worship of one and only one God, and to teach them a way to be honest, upright, and living based on the commandments of Almighty God. He always described himself as a servant and a messenger of God, and so indeed every action of his life proclaimed exactly that. Let's go on. Letter Y. Speaking on the aspect of equality before God in Islam, the famous poetess of India, Nadu, says, it was the first religion that preached and practiced true democracy. For in the mosque, when the call for prayer was sounded and worshippers gathered together, the democracy of Islam was embodied five times a day when the peasant and the king kneel side by side and they proclaim that God alone is the greatest. I have been struck over and over again by this indivisible unity of Islam that makes man instinctively a brother to his fellow man. This was from Ideals of Islam and speeches and writings in the Madras. This was uh, in Madras, India, which is now called Shanai, by the way. It was published in 1918. It's on page 169. Z. And now we come to Z. In the words of Professor Horongrin G, he says that the League of Nations founded by the Prophet of Islam put the principle of international unity and human brotherhood on such universal foundations as to show candle to other nations. He continues, the fact is that no nation of the world can show a parallel to what Islam has done towards the realization of the idea of the League of Nations. So now we're going to come to the next Z. I had to come up with uh, another letter because we still got more to say. So the next Z, <laughs> Z2, <laughs> it was Edward Gibbon and Simon Oakley on the profession of Islam. They write in History of the Caesarean Empires. He says, I believe in one God and Muhammad an apostle of God is the simple and invariable profession of Islam. He's quoting the statement. He said that this statement, I believe in God and Muhammad is the apostle of God is a simple and invariable profession of Islam. The intellectual image of the deity has never been degraded by any visible idol. Islam doesn't allow that, you see. The honor of the Prophet Muhammad has been never transgressed the measure of human virtues and his living precepts have restrained the gratitude of his disciples within the bounds of reason and religion that's in the history of the Caesarean Empires published in London in 1870 it's on page 54 if you want to look it up next Z we got another Z coming up this is Z3 <laughs> Wolfgang Goethe he says uh, and he's perhaps the greatest European poet ever and when he talks about Muhammad, peace be upon him, he says that he is a prophet and not a poet. And therefore his Quran is to be seen as divine law, not as a book of a human being made for education or for entertainment. We want to mention that people do not hesitate to raise the divinity and even make gods out of other individuals whose lives and missions have been lost in legend. Historically speaking, none of these legends achieves even a fraction of what Muhammad, peace be upon him, had accomplished. And all of his striving was for the sole purpose of uniting mankind for the purpose of worship of one God on the codes of moral excellence. Muhammad, peace be upon him, or his followers, never at any time claimed that he was a God or a son of a God or an incarnate of God 
or a man of divinity but he always was and is even today considered as a simple messenger chosen by God today after a lapse of 14 centuries the life and the teachings of Muhammad peace be upon him have survived without the slightest loss alteration or interpolation these teachings offer the same undying hope for treating mankind's many ills which they did when he was alive this is not a claim of Muhammad peace be upon him or his followers but it's the inescapable conclusion forced upon a critical and unbiased history now it's up to you you're a rational thinking concerned human being as such you should already be asking yourself could these extraordinary revolutionary and amazing statements all about this one man really be true what if it is true then who do you say is Muhammad peace be upon him For more references and information about this program, visit our internet website at islamalways.com slash Muhammad. Spell it I-S-L-A-M-A-L-W-A-Y-S dot com slash Muhammad. M-U-H-A-M-M-A-D. You'll find our website. It's always open 24 hours a day. And always plenty of free parking. Until next time, there's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger.